Hey, this is Mike Matthews from MuscleForLife.com and in this short video I want to talk about how to fix your metabolism to make weight loss easier. So, to, to start I want to explain a little bit of what you've probably heard of metabolic damage and, and what this is and how metabolic speed relates to your ability to lose weight. So basically, your metabolism uh, in, in terms of speed, what we're talking about is how much energy it burns every day. Uh, energy can be, you know, it could, uh, the, the common way we measure it is in calories, right? Potential energy in food, how much energy it's burning. Um, so when you are restricting your calories for weight loss, which is what you have to do, you have to feed your body less energy than it burns, your, your metabolism naturally slows down. There's no way to avoid this. this is, there's nothing inherently wrong with it. It's just how the body works. Because what the body wants to do is it wants to maintain a state of energy balance or, or homeostasis. It wants to match um, consumption with what it's burning. It wants to, if you're feeding it 2,000 calories a day, it wants to be as efficient as possible and keep you alive on 2,000 calories a day. Uh, it doesn't want to, uh, it, it can't keep on pulling fat stores forever or you would just die. Because if the body, I mean, think about it, if the metabolism didn't respond like this, if you burn 2,500 calories a day and you eat 2,000 calories a day and the metabolism just kept on going, you would, and you kept on feeding your body 2,000 calories a day, you would get to a, a body fat percentage, you know, you would get to 3% and then die. So uh, what the body does to stay alive and to preserve its health is it slows the metabolism down. So um, what you do uh, when, you're, when, you're, when you're losing weight properly is you start off with a mild calorie deficit and you, you, you know, your body burns fat, burns fat, metabolism slows down. And then once you stall seven to 10 days, your weight's the same, you're looking the same, okay, you're not losing fat anymore. You either move more or you eat less, everyone's heard that. And you kind of rinse, repeat that until you reach your goal. And then you slowly increase your calories back uh, up to uh, where they should be in terms of what you're burning every day, uh, given your basal metabolic rate and how much physical activity you're engaging in. That's the normal way of going about it. Um, but the, the, a big mistake that many people make, and this is where metabolic damage comes in, is they will dramatically cut their calories when they start losing weight. They, don't, they use a severe deficit. Like let's say they're burning 20, let's say they're uh, eating about 2,500 calories a day. They're eating about what they burn. Um, they're not restricting. They're not, this isn't, uh, let's say somebody weighs like, let's say a guy weighs 180 pounds, 190 pounds. Um, and or maybe 170, 180 exercising should be able to eat that, and that's a good amount of food. Um, so what they'll do is they'll go, oh well, I'm gonna cut down, go from 2,500 a day down to 1,800 a day because I heard this dude does that, and that's what he does. Um, that is, and that would be borderline. I mean, that's 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 definitely a large deficit, much larger than you should be. But some people they'll drop to 1,500 or whatever, and that's where you start getting these severe calorie deficits. Um, a mild deficit would, maybe, would be anywhere from 10 to 20 percent. Uh, anything more than that is when you can get in trouble. So what happens then is, sure you lose fat, of course the body has to get that energy from somewhere, but the metabolism rapidly slows down because the body senses this is a danger. Uh, you know, it's not getting fed a lot of food. It better bring, its, it better slow itself down, uh, you know, quickly or this is going to be a problem. And it does this using different hormones and such. So what happens then is weight loss rolls along. You know, the, if, if a person, if a guy did that, he wouldn't feel very good, but he'll be losing weight. Um, and then, you know, let's say after three, four weeks, it stalls. He's not losing weight anymore, but he's at, you know, uh, 18, 1700 calories a day or less. What does he do? Mm, okay, he goes, well, I mean, that's not a lot of food. I'm already hungry. I guess I'll just like move more. So he does more exercise, burns more energy. Um, this puts even more demands on the, on, the, on the body and on the metabolism to try to balance things. He can lose some more fat because he's going to be burning more energy. The body's got to figure it out somehow. But then even that stops working. Um, and what then? So now you have a person, and I, I tend to run into this more with women than men, um, because probably because a lot of the diet advice for women revolves around starvation dieting and doing a ton of cardio, and that's a great way to ruin your metabolism. Start like starve yourself and do hours and hours of cardio every week and you will break your metabolism very quickly. Um, but you know, some guys, they, they, they come across bad advice and they do the same thing. Um, okay, so, so you've crashed your metabolism, you've lost some body fat, you're, you're already exercising you know, more than, than you even want to maybe, your body's not feeling good, you don't even have the energy to do more exercise if you wanted, now what? 
do you cut your calories even more? Some people, you know, they're, they're trying to be tough. They're trying to, this is just how it works. They read like calories in, calories out. I must just need to eat less calories. They reduce their calories further. It just exacerbates the problem until finally they get stuck in this situation where they're eating not but barely, you know, very, 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 a lot less food than they should be able to eat. Um, and they're still in many cases, uh, you know, they, they rarely have reached their, their body fat percentage, their original goal of the diet. Um, because that initial spike of weight loss or that initial spurt of weight loss didn't last long enough. Maybe they only were able to lose five, seven, eight pounds, maybe 10, 15 pounds, depending on their situation. And then it, we hit this stall, which then just kind of puttered out into a complete flat line. So uh, from that point, um, sometimes, you know, this is where a lot of people will contact me. They're either just main, they're sitting there at that low calorie intake, doing all the exercise, wondering what's wrong or they've lost hope and been very discouraged, so they start piling in food. In the former case, um, you know, of course they're just confused. Why, you know, why does this other person get to eat so much more than me and they're not even exercising as much? You know, why do they lose weight and I don't lose weight? Uh, in the latter case, if you start uh, gorging on food when you're, when you're in this situation where your metabolism is dramatically slowed down, um, your body can store excessive amounts of fat. And this is, this is the, even this is worse than, than the former situation because the former situation is easier to fix. But when, it, when, when you start piling in food again, your body fat will quickly increase, but your metabolism will not quickly increase. So your metabolic speed will improve because now you're feeding uh, the, your body more food, which now your body starts adjusting the metabolism up because once again, it does, it doesn't necessarily, your body doesn't want to get fatter. I mean, there are certain basic levels of body fat the body needs, but it, once again, if you, if you start eating a lot of food, your body does want to match consumption with output. So it will speed up, but when you've damaged it or well, when you've crashed it like that, uh, it's not a it's not a fast process. You can't just start s slamming down food and your body goes, oh, okay, fine. We'll just, we'll just you know come up to a normal range again. It's uh, you got to go about it a little bit differently, which we'll talk about in a second. So what can happen is you start slamming down food. Your body fat levels quickly rise. Uh, you know they can go up to where they were at before you dieted in the first place or even higher, but your metabolism has not even recovered to where it was before you dieted. So maybe on this, in this case, you had this guy, he could eat 25, 2600 calories a day. He could maintain 15% body fat. He does this whole crash starvation diet thing and, and then starts uh, eating a ton of food. Now he's at 16, 17% body fat, but his metabolism has only come up to burning about 23, 2200 calories a day. So he's in a significantly worse situation now because when he looks at his body and he goes, you know, um, so I mean, I'm even fatter than I was before. I need to, I need to cut and to cut, I need to do this. Um, and then, but he goes, oh, I'm only eating 2300 a day now. So, you know, a person could go, go, well, I'm, go down to 1200. I mean, I've got to get there. I've got to get there. Um, and I'm working with a guy that, that basically did that. He came to me at about 200 pounds, 12, 12% body fat, maybe, uh, maybe a little bit more eating 1200 calories a day. I mean, that's really, really low. That's bad. Um, he should have been able to be eating probably 26, 2700 a day, maybe 25 ish. I think he's working out three days a week. Um, when he came to me, uh, and you know, and maintain where he was at, but he was eating half and wasn't, you know, his weight was totally stagnant for, for a couple months he was there. Um, so now that, you know, that if he, he, he when he came to me, he was like, how do I, how do I fix this? I can't, I can't, exercise more, I don't feel good, I can't eat less or whatever. Um, so that is, there are a lot of women, you know, they'll come to me and be maybe 140, 150 pounds, eating 1,000, 1,100 calories a day, not losing weight, same type of situation, and they got there in the same way in almost all cases. Um, so let's, let's talk about how to fix it now. So if you're in this situation, what you need to do is one, you need to focus on weightlifting, not cardio. You, you can do cardio, but uh, your focus should be weightlifting. Building muscle is hugely beneficial to the metabolism. It drives the metabolism. Uh, you know, it burns calories. It oxidizes fats. Um, it is very important for your overall health, actually. Uh, so that's one thing is you want to be focusing on weightlifting. I would suggest three to five weightlifting sessions a week um, on your cardio. I prefer high intensity interval cardio. You burn more fat in less time. You preserve more muscle. Um, I just don't know why. I mean, why do low intensity cardio when it's just less effective and unless you just really enjoy it, I guess. 
um, and I would recommend starting with maybe three to four 20, 25 minute sessions a week, nothing excessive. Um, so that's the first thing I do with people is I change their, their uh, how they're going about it. In, in some cases, I mean, some women are doing two, one to two hours of cardio a day, seven days a week, eating little amounts of food, not losing weight, feeling like terrible. So, I mean, it's a huge difference when they change to lifting more, doing less cardio, eating more food. Not only do they feel a thousand times better, they actually start looking better. Like I have people that will get leaner as they uh, change their workout program. And then on the diet side, we need to slowly increase calories. That's the key. Up to, you should be able to eat what your total daily expenditure is uh, as, you know, you can... Um, calculate this by using the catch McArdle formula for, for calculating your basal metabolic rate and uh, you can multiply it. I find the catch, their standard multiplier is a bit high, um, but if you multiply it, you know, if you're exercising one to three hours a week, a 1.2 or 1.25 is a good multiplier. If you're exercising a few hours more a week, a 1.35 or so, and if you're exercising like six to seven hours a week, uh, then a 1.5 on your BMR is will be a fairly accurate guess of how much energy how many calories you should be able to eat uh, every day and maintain your, your, your body fat percentage. So what you don't want to do though is just go from like in this case this guy that was eating 1200 calories a day, we don't just jump him to 2500 calories a day because that will cause uh, fat storage. What we do instead is we increase calories by about 100 to 150 a day for five to seven days. And then we do it again and then we do it again. Uh, until we have, you know, in, in his case, we actually worked him up to about 25, 26, maybe even 27, actually, he was going on higher days, but uh, right in that range per day, which was much better for, for where he should be. In that time of going from 1,200 to 26-ish, he uh, gained a couple pounds, but actually looked leaner. Because remember, your muscles store water, they store glycogen. When you start eating more food and you start weighing more, it's not because you're automatically gaining fat. So he looks leaner eating double the, more than double the calories a day. Of course, his workouts are way better, he feels way better. And, and now we're gonna start walking his calories, we're gonna start restricting his calories on mildly, because he wants to, he's about 12, 13%, he wants to get to 10 or below. So you know now he has room metabolically to do this, which is the key. Uh, so that's really what it boils down to, is slowly increasing your calories, focusing on weightlifting, and not going crazy with the cardio. Um, in terms of macronutrients, um, a standard high protein, uh, I, I like uh, moderately high carbo carbohydrate intake and moderate fat intake, enough for your basic uh, you know, health physiological needs. Um, there are, this would be the subject of a different video, but uh, if there, there could be benefits to being a little bit higher fat intake. So if you do like 40% of calories, 30 to 40% of calories from protein, 30-ish um, from uh, from carbohydrate and you know 30 or 40 depending on what you're doing with your protein on fats um, that the eat, having having a bit more fats go, taking your daily fats from like 20% of calories to 40% of calories can increase anabolic hormones uh, a little bit uh, which helps with this situation um, that's that's not a vital point though really like I've done it with people just going a standard type of like 40% of 40% daily calories from protein 40% from carbs 20% from fat and they've done totally fine um, really, the most important factor is just calories. It's just increasing the amount of energy that you're giving your body so your body can slowly start to increase its metabolism back up and uh, the weightlifting supports that and not doing a ton of cardio supports that as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's really what it boils down to. Uh, there, that's also what you do uh, when you are finishing a cut, which uh, actually could be the subject of another video. It's called reverse dieting, how to do that properly. So you don't uh, leave your metabolism because you slow it down when you cut, uh, but you want to come out of that by speeding it back up without putting on a bunch of body fat. You don't want to just, you don't want to leave your calories at the end of wherever they're at at the end of your cut. You don't want to just stay there. You need to start increasing them, even if you don't plan on bulking or, or, or whatever. Um, so yeah, that's about it. I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like it and subscribe to my channel below. I'm going to be doing a lot of these shorter videos, uh, you know, so keep an eye out. Thank you.